welcome back to Engrain Woodworks. Today, we're going to take some time to set up our Silverback 6060 CNC router in easel. The first thing that we'll need to do to prepare our machine to connect it through easel is open up your flash drive and download the CH340 driver. It may say CH341SER. Uh, either way, if it isn't there, you don't have your flash drive handy, uh, you could search for it in Google. And then my suggestion is to use GitHub, G-I-T-H-U-B.com. And right here you'll see 340 drivers for hobby components products. Now basically what this driver does is it turns your USB port and it makes the computer think that it's a uh, serial port. So we need to have it in order to communicate with our machine. Uh, whenever you come into GitHub here, you can click on this top option and then click on driver setup 64 and select the exe now once this downloads it's going to uh to bring up the prompts to install it simply install that driver now if you already have a uh a 3018 or 3036 you won't have to install the driver if you already have it installed this is the same driver that runs the uh, serial or the USB is like a serial port. You'll run through the basic installation and once you're done, you're going to connect your USB to one of the USB ports on your machine or on your computer. Once we've installed our serial port driver, we're next going to click on the machine tab here in easel. And we're going to install the easel driver by clicking on driver and post processors, selecting download for Windows or Mac or whatever you have. Once you're done here, you're going to come back into easel. Now, once we're in easel, we're going to uh, select set up a new machine. Now, if, if something happens that your carve button is blue, that just means that it does not see your machine yet. So we have to do two things to set up our machine so or set up easel so it can see our machine so we can make these settings unique to this particular device. The first is going to be finding out what our COM port is. Now there's a couple of different ways you can do it. The easiest way if you're on Windows 10 is just to type devices. If you're on Windows 7 like I am, you click the settings menu and we're going to go to Bluetooth and other devices, and then you'll see other devices, USB serial, and that same identifier from our uh, driver, and COM5. Now, COM5 is really important. That's what we're going to remember from this. We're going to click Carve, and it's going to tell us, hey, we can't find your machine automatically. So go ahead and uh, select Enter COM port manually by checking the box, and we're going to enter the number 5 since we were on COM port 5. And now you see the carve light turn green. That means that it knows that our machine's connected. Now we still don't have any settings in here and we don't have any specifics about our machine. So we're gonna select machine and set up new machine. We're gonna set up an other third party machine. And so you'll see it comes up with other GRBL. We're gonna go down here and select other for a work area, it is 600 by 600 millimeters. And then dust shoe, you can select if you'd like to. If you have a dust shoe, it'll just remind you to put your dust shoe onto the spindle before starting the carve. We're gonna click confirm settings. It says enter the COM port this machine is connected to. And again, we're gonna enter five. All right, so now it recognized the machine. It's talking to the machine. We're going to use this screen here to test our wiring and make sure that everything's moving in the right direction. Now, in this case, this machine is all the way in the rear right position. So we're gonna move the X to the left. And by pushing left, we see that it works and it moves to the left. We're gonna move it to the right and it works. So we're gonna click yes. Now we're gonna click Y. We're gonna bring it forward and then we're gonna send it backwards. It worked, we're gonna click yes. For Z, we're gonna go down and then back up. 
it is working correct correctly we'll click yes now it's going to ask us for our spindle if we want it controlled automatically or if we want to make it manual now if you have the makita router you should set it up as manual unless you have it set up through a relay or something else advanced uh, which we'll discuss later on in another video altogether for now we're going to leave it as automatic save spindle now when we click turn on spindle it's going to activate our spindle and turn it back off we're going to click continue it's going to ask if we have limiting limit switches and if we do in this case we do we're going to say yes enable homing and then we can choose to start the homing sequence here it's going to go through its sequence now the idea here is they're just trying to make sure that it homes to where you want it and you can change these settings in the grbl settings if you want to uh, completely up to you and what your preference is. My preference for homing is the back right hand corner because it gets it out of my way so that anything that I'm working on, I can have full access to my bed. All right, so we've homed the machine. Now it's going to ask if we have a Z probe. We do indeed. We're going to plug the leads into the carriage, is the equivalent of plug in the leads to the control box for us. And then we're going to attach the clip. So I'm going to attach my, oops, sorry, I'm hooked here trying to get around my stuff. I'm going to hook my lead to my bit. I'm going to say the clip is attached. And now what it's asking me to do is touch the plate to the bit. And what we're making sure is on the machine or on the uh, computer that this little circle turns green. All right, so after I made contact, it was happy. Now, what we need to do is we have to take a pair of calipers and measure our touch plate. Now, this is a really important step because this is going to give us our accurate measurement for our, um, for our Z probe height. If we don't do this step, we won't know how thick the Z probe plate is. So when the machine retracts, it won't actually know how far away it is. It'll just be an arbitrary distance. So to do something or to do so, we're going to use a caliper here. Pull the light back so you guys can see it. So we're going to take our caliper and we're going to measure our touch plate. Now they actually want it in millimeters. So we're going to zero and we'll change this to millimeters. Now that we're zeroed, this is 20.24. Let's do 20.19. I pushed this down a little bit. I'm happy with that number. It's accurate all the way around. So 20.19 is what we're going to do for our touch plate thickness. 20.19. Our probe rate, the slower the probe rate, the more accurate it's going to be. Retract height, um, retracting it however far after it makes its touch. Maximum probing distance. You can set really to whatever you want. Um, we have 10 centimeters worth of travel. So we could set this at a full 100 or we could set this somewhere in the middle. Um, 78 is perfectly fine. You're never really going to be going all the way from the top to the bottom of travel. And if you do, you'll probably run into your spoil board. So, I would say to leave it about three quarters of the total travel here. And now we're going to test the probing sequence. Now it's already moving here because it thinks I'm still connected, even though I had to do some additional settings. Hold our probe in position. It touched and retract just like it's supposed to. So we are good to go. Now, if you prefer uh, inches versus millimeters, absolutely can select inches at the top. All right, we're going to click continue, and now we're done. We're going to click finish, and we're ready to carve.